G'day everyone, Matt Elder of Family Bricks and in this video we're going to review the LEGO Ideas International Space Station set number 21321. We will also have a time lapse speed build showing how it is built. Here is the one page review summary. This video will go into the detail behind it and at the end of the video we explained how we arrived at the scores and the comments. So in T minus 3, 2, 1, blast off. This is a Family Bricks video. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and if you want to be super awesome, subscribe. Click the bell and select all to be notified of new videos as they're uploaded. So here we have the LEGO Ideas International Space Station set 2132. Retails for about 65 pounds or 69 US dollars or 69 euros. So that means it'll give you a price to part ratio of about 7.5 pence or 8.1 cents, both in American and euros. So for that, it's reasonable value. Obviously you're dealing with some printed pieces and a lot of small type pieces. There are a couple of Technic bits in there. So it seems to be of a reasonable sort of value. It's a decent sort of size. You've got it being about 50 centimeters or 20 inches across by about 30 centimeters or 12 inches in that direction. And there's a fair amount of detail on this. You've got all the different solar panels, different antennae, you know, grabbing arm here, stand here, and some really nice white nano figs, which has some prints on them for the like astronauts. Then you've got little satellite and a little docking module like a SpaceX type dragon. And then you've even got a little old style shuttle, which in the back even has three different booster engines. And you do have that slight little angle like they're really at. Underside has got those two by two inverted. The only weird thing about this is it doesn't actually sort of clip in to the actual section there. It just sort of rests in there on top. And you don't really quite know. It's got a really nice International Space Station print on it there as a display piece. That's a nice thing with this set. Everything is prints. There's no stickers in here whatsoever, which is probably a good thing because by the time if you went through and applied all of those there, you'd probably drive yourself a little bit crazy. The arms themselves also rotate all the way around. So quite good there. Then you can have them at whatever angle that you prefer. And same with the other side. Obviously there, you're starting to see a little bit of the inverted studs and things like that, so less of a display on that angle. You do actually build it on the stand and start with the stand, and you can actually lift it up and take it off. And, you know, and do your, your swoosh ability if you really wanted to. And it does sit nicely back on there. And it's solid enough, you can just grab it by the legs there, and that feels pretty secure. Although the little bits and pieces at the bottom will come off relatively easily, they're just held on by little studs and jumpers. And then if we turn it around, we can check out what's happening around on the back there. Let's go there. You can see you've got some more details from this side. And I guess when you look from this side, it's not really designed to be seen from this side. I mean, apart from the orange you've got there. But these flag pieces here, you can see there's no print on the back. But if I was to take one off, they've actually got prints on the other side. So I do find, had they made a print on the reverse side, that would have been quite good. Or even, dare I say it, if you really want to just have some stickers or something there, because at least some of the other bits, you can at least sort of turn around and move. So if you wanted to display it from this side and flip those up in that angle, it would be nice not having to have to take that all the way off to be able to display it, because it just, when you've got all those sort of details in there on the solar panels and then they're just big blue blank bits, it doesn't look as nice. And as you probably saw, these radiation panels here, they can also turn and they have a swivel on the hinge. And this little satellite here can also just pop off. Go off and float into space. Or if you're trying to do a docking maneuver or anything like that, they can also go in there. So just going back around to, I guess, what we'll call the front side. And underneath you can see same sort of thing you've got these white flags which in this case they're actually blank on both sides so just rotate those back up there so you do have the ability for some of these dishes and that they're on little hinge joints and a little grabber arm here that you can move around and these also move around and rotate on their pivots as well and it's good that you got a couple of these little nano figs because you can have them out out and about doing their little spacewalks or doing repairs or whatever you might want them to. 
same sort of deal with the actual shuttle itself as well you can have that and have a bit of a swooshing going on if it needs to dock or do whatever maneuvers it wants you can do that as well and of course the kids being the kids the first thing they wanted to do with the shuttle is go and put some rocket firing missiles onto it <clears throat> but we might just take those off and put it back there Check around the video, you'll be able to see the kids review and also too how they were playing with it and interacting with it. Otherwise, as a general build experience, it was pretty solid. It wasn't anything too tricky. It takes about an hour or so to be able to do. It can get a little bit repetitive and tedious as you do make quite a number of these sort of satellite type things or variations of that slightly. And then of course you have to go through and make eight of these actual solar panel things, which when I did it with the kids, we each sort of did it. So then we did sort of like three each, give or take. But I could see if you were doing that by yourself, you'd want to really get into some sort of system. Or when you get to bag six and the instructions and it says you've got to do it eight times to get towards the very end, you're just like, Ugh. So in terms of playability, there is some aspects where you're able to play with it a little bit, but it does get pretty fragile. So we found when the kids were starting to play with it, things would be falling off pretty easily. And even when you're picking it up and taking it off the stand and things, if you're not putting it down and grabbing it from the right part, then it does fall off quite easily. So that said, it's probably more of a display piece in and of itself. It has a significant presence, it's a good size, the colours work well, you've got this nice little blue with the hints of the orange coming through and the white and the grey, and the stand works really well, and obviously you've got the printed pieces there, and the other little bits and pieces of paraphernalia in terms of the shuttle and some of the satellites. As already mentioned, you get a couple of these printed nano figs, so there's two there, and you actually do get a spare one. There's no real mini figs, but no real need for it, given what it is and the size and scale. So just having a look at the instruction book, again, much the same as the box art. Generic sort of stuff for Lego. Going on just about the International Space Station. A couple of little images there, just going into a bit of the history. The fact that it's the 15 nations. And there's just going on about some of the research that's doing in space and some of the experiments that they do up there. You can't actually do on Earth, so it's good that they can get all that sort of information. Then next up, it starts to go on about the fan designer which came through and did this. And then just goes through his many different attempts to get it through the Lego ideas and how it was rejected twice and he kept on refining it and then coming back when they wanted to do the 10th anniversary of the Lego ideas, putting it forward and then the fan vote pulling it through so it could be an actually properly made set, which is great to get that sort of history there. But then it just goes on more, another two pages on Lego ideas, more stuff on Lego ideas, more stuff on Lego ideas before you start getting the building. And then in the back as well, you have another two pages on the Lego ideas. So effectively there's about nine and a half pages just promoting the Lego ideas, which I can kind of get. The thing that was a little bit annoying was you only had these two pages, which is a little bit of generic information, but doesn't actually explain all the different parts. It doesn't have a blueprint or anything like that to explain what all the different parts are that you're building, you know, beyond the actual solar panels. We didn't know what a lot of this sort of stuff is and you had to go and do like a Google search and you just find all sorts of blueprints which tell you all sorts of things like we didn't even know that these things here were the radiators for it. And you know, they could have just done something to explain a few of the other little bits and pieces in there. The fact then that they had nine and a half pages going on about, you know, the different Lego ideas and everything like that, like there's a real missed opportunity where they could have had that information in there. So you get a better connection with what it is that you're building. Otherwise, it's sort of like, well, I know there's some sort of solar panels and yeah, that's it. So again, I just think that was a missed opportunity. Otherwise, the instructions themselves, you know, pretty standard sort of thing for Lego. There wasn't really anything really too complicated in there. It's more just getting through some of the repetitive and a little bit of tedious detail. Oh, actually, a tenth page on Lego ideas. So here, just checking out the box art, it's got a nice picture of the Lego version with like a realistic Earth in the back there, space shuttle, showing that it's a Lego idea set number 29, and just some specs and from the Lego sizes itself, and then being a 15 member country, just all the different flags, which are funding the International Space Station. Flipping over to the back, again, we just see a nice little shot of it there all set up. Then a few little pull-out details that it has there, the grabbering arm, space shuttle coming into dock, and then just a top-down view of it there, and the International Space Station, 20 years that it's been going. 
I guess the other thing with this is that you generally think of space and then you've had all the NASA sets, so you think, oh, somehow it's NASA. But being the International Space Station, it's not actually NASA. It's a 15-member country. Just checking out some other details. You know, one edge of the box there, it's just showing the usual one-to-one -one of one of the printed pieces. And then just some the space station shuttle, mini nanofig, space capsule, and a satellite. And the spine, there, just another composite shot box just general generic details and another shot down the side so overall a nice box design and just really showing what it is and in context and now into the time lapse of the actual build itself the box opens up in a clamshell type way and you've got six bags and the instructions the kids enjoyed having a look at some of the space photos and some of the other sets in the range quickly checking out what each bag builds and then on to the actual build itself Start off with one of the satellites and then also build the actual space shuttle as well. The space shuttle itself is actually quite a good build, particularly considering that there's not many pieces. It's bizarre to think that with the retiring of the space shuttle program nine years ago, they'll never actually grow up and see a space shuttle launch or have any real idea of that. They have seen the space shuttle prototype Enterprise on the USS Intrepid in New York Harbor and Atlantis in Cape Canaveral. So now down the stand and starting to build out the main corridor for the space station itself. And with that, on to bag four pretty quickly. So now building out a few nodes and I think some laboratories having to reference some diagrams off the internet to try to know what is what. Both sides do this by building off a long Technic axle and threading the pieces onto it. Next up we build the radiators with the white pieces. Any excess heat or waste heat generated on the ISS needs to be gotten rid of. Pure water in these pipes would quickly freeze so they add in ammonia which has a lower freezing temperature and prevents the water from freezing. It's amazing all these little things they have to think of and prepare for. Next on to bag six and making the eight racks of solar panels. It was good to have us all working on these at the same time. Once that is done, the solar panels move into position and then are put into the right places. The space shuttle comes along and some astronauts. A few other accessories and I think we're good. Another look at our final Lego model build of the International Space Station. Here are the spare parts which came in the set, being that it's a set with a lot of little parts, you'd expect that there's going to be a fair number of parts. It's great that you get another little one of these printed nano figs. So there's three of those all together. Otherwise a pretty stand selection. Uh it's got the, another ski pole in gold, which is quite nice. And a couple of roller skates in the black and also the light bluish grey. And another one by one round printed piece there too on the tile. And now onto our review summary of the International Space Station. You can see it was released in 2020, the set number there, the cost, 864 pieces, and the price per piece being around about 7.5 p's and 8.1 cents, both in American and Euros. The build time's about an hour plus. For the build experience, we gave it a 6.5. It's a pretty solid build, but it does get a little bit repetitive and tedious, particularly with the last bag, with all those solar panels and a lot of the little satellite type constructions. Value for money, we gave a 7.5. It's a reasonably good sort of value at 7.5 and 8.1 and price per part ratio, but they are smaller pieces and parts. We did feel, however, that with 10 pages or so on LEGO ideas and not going into much of the actual space station itself, there was a real missed opportunity there to really learn about the space station, become more invested in the set and understand exactly what it was you were building. I didn't really learn anything new about the space station and quite the contrary, had to go to Google and start looking through some results there to learn anything new. For playability, we gave the set of four. It's quite fragile and there's not a great deal that you can really do with it. For displayability, we gave it an 8.5. It displays great from one side, but that's the issue, is that as a display piece, when you flip it over to the other side, it doesn't really display well and you've got to fiddle around with it to get it into a good display orientation. Looking at the target market, we'd say it's mainly for space geeks and ideas fans. The pros with the set is that it's good value and it's a pretty close approximation to the real International Space Station. The cons, as we've mentioned previously, it's fragile with limited playability, and you get 10 pages of Lego ideas advertising at the expense of any real quality ISS information. The overall summary is that it's a great display piece for space enthusiasts. In terms of a buy recommendation with a day one must have ranging all the way through to a craglet because you can't stand it, we'd put it somewhere between a purchase if it's on sale or only for really diehard fans of space and ideas. 
So taking an average of the four scores that we have up there, we come up with an overall rating of a 66%. It's a solid set, but you're looking at a subset of a space demographic, largely those who want something for display. Here is a SpaceX Falcon Heavy video we did, links around the video. This was a fan design we put together and the kids are really into space. We've also done this Ori by JK Brickworks, again links around the video. With both of these sets, the kids have been able to engage and learn and feel that they've gotten great value out of them. We were hoping for something similar with this International Space Station set, but feel it was disappointing and something that will collect dust on the shelf. What do you think? Are we being too harsh or feel the comments are on the money? Let us know in the comments below. This is a Family Bricks video. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and if you want to be super awesome, subscribe. Click the bell and select all to be notified of new videos as they're uploaded. You might like to see the kids review and playthrough of this LEGO International Space Station and you can click here to do so. Here is the Falcon Heavy review you might also like. Alternatively, here are some other videos you might be interested in. That's all from us here at Family Bricks. Thanks very much for watching and please do hit that thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Until next time when we talk about all things LEGO and lifestyle.